Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Money in the Law. My FM 101.3. Checking my levels here right now. My levels yes, look good. You are in the I'm, just like coloring. Know, Stay in the lines. I'm, I'm high. Stay in the I'm lines. High. Stay in the lines. Um, maybe I, I think it blends. I think it goes up when we blended blend. average. Yeah. Blended average. So uh, you're listening to Money in the Law, and you're watching Money in the Law. Uh, listen to Money in the Law. On My FM 101.3. Yes, and you're also watching on Holliston Cable Access TV, Holliston Hub. <sighs> Uh, not official or no? It's not official, right, but it it's... Keep it on the DL. Keep it on the DL. No, I mean, the it, I mean whatever. What, what are we waiting for, right? That's what I say. I what are we waiting for? There's probably something. There's a reason. So, <laughs> There's so, a reason. <laughs> I'm making it up as <laughs> I go launch. along. Yo, soft launch. Soft launch, yeah. It's soft, soft open. Soft open. Um, money in the law. Uh, we talk about all things that have to do with money and finance and anything, <laughs> you know, the stuff that... You know, kind of the stuff that, I mean, we say it's only money, but it kind of, you know, sort of pushes, it doesn't make the world go around, but it kind of, it, it it's kind of a lubricant to allow we've, the world we've talked to about go this around. Issue. We've talked about this here. Who doesn't love money? Why do you have two microphones? I don't have two microphones. I have one microphone holding up the other microphone. This is, it looks this like, is, <laughs> I know. I mean, I know. I'm just saying, for those of you in radio land right now, Jay, you can't is, see this uh, abomination, double abomination of a setup doubled here. Up. Yep. Yep. It's yep. like a double podcast. Yep. We, start, uh, we have to start bringing our own microphones. You know, like, remember that, remember that scene in the Blues Brothers and they walk up the briefcase? Oh, yeah. Right. And they open the briefcase up and they, they take out microphones. <laughs> <laughs> Plug you know these in. We must start doing these that. These ought to work. Yeah, we we'll um, start doing that. So, along with money, we also talk about legal things. Talk yes. about the law. And, the and, in, law. And, and one of the things that we specialize, I say we collectively, uh, that we specialize in is we talk about like estate planning and kind of like the law around Elder planning, law. right? Along around like as you as you age, as you start to ed, enter the twilight into the uh, Probate. yeah into the uh, into the into that part of your, like the golden years, right? Yeah, could be sure. Yep. Well, I hope they are. I, mean, I hope they are, sell too. Them, right? So the golden years, as you get there, you know, there's some things that you'd like to get some things in order, you know, to kind of, you know, it's almost like to uh, kind of, you know, mem you know, not memorialize, but just to kind of make sure that all of your hard work gets uh We call it facilitating your legacy. Oh, there we go. Like that, huh? Yeah, I, I do like that. Yeah, write, that do. write that down, kids. Yep. yep. Facilitate your legacy. Yep. Because yep. that's what the kids are going to write down. That's exactly what they're going to write. I'm calling about the facilitation of a legacy. Yeah. Oh, hold on. You've reached the right place. Speaking huh? of kids, and we, you were talking about how, how before we started, how uh, your, your your children were actually had, had seen, had watched uh, one, of the, one of the cold opens here at Money in the Law, <laughs> yes, and, and captured yes. one of your uh, some 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 of your enthusiasm, um, captured some of my energy. I, I mean, I, I, and and as I as you were saying that, I'm thinking, I'm like, well, that's so nice that she's actually watching. Oh that, my right? gosh, yeah. That she watches to see, right? Yeah, yeah and, she loves seeing it. Because it's my funny. because my kids they can't turn it off fast enough. Right? Yeah. So so if I'm if I'm in the car on a Saturday morning with one of my children, and and I know what time it is, and oh, I yeah. know what's on, right? And they're you know they always hijack the radio, and it's like oh, I want to put on my music, my music, and I'm. Like, just let me, uh, let me put some, and it's like eleven ten, and oh, I'm like, and, and I'm just do, do, do. What, what? Who's that? Who's that? Who's Who is, is that? that? Wow! Is, is that, that is that your Uncle Jay? Yeah. Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> so what John's referring to is there was a clip, a an H cat clip of, uh, of of us. What you don't see if you're just listening to us on the radio is I've got some pretty smooth moves that usually come out right around the time that in my head I'm hearing the. He's uh, a pretty good song. dancer. He's a pretty I'm hearing the dancer. song that, that that comes in as the intro tune for the uh, for the show. And so I'm sort of sitting here, and I got I got I got my my Liverpool scarf on, and I got my blazer on, and I'm kind of putting some moves to it, and it's on HCAT. And so my daughter took the clip, cut it, sent it to me, and said, "This, this is, is the funniest yeah. thing I've seen all day." So it's become a little bit of a a, a meme. What, <laughs> look, do kids, look, what do the kids call it? A, a gif? A, a gif? gif right? That's meme? A, whatever it is. Like that. Yeah, it's yeah. going so to yeah. be out there. You'll be you'll be able to send it to somebody else yeah. uh, from your yeah. iPhone. Show your excitement at some point. Yeah. Show the bring yeah. the energy. Someday, someday, right? We, we could be big enough where you, you know you just type in in that little thingy where you you know the search engine there where you money in the law and you'll you see yeah. a whole bunch of pictures yeah. of us. Yeah, back in the day. Yeah. Or today, right now, or, today. <laughs> or yeah. tomorrow, yeah. yeah, or next week. <laughs> um, welcome, uh, our buddy Tom's here. Yes, uh, he is. Let, yeah, yep. Tom's here, of yep. course. And and Tom is, and and you know, we've had we've had some pretty good, you know, some pretty good representation from Hollis and Cable Access. Oh, we TV. have, yes, we and, have, and and committed, right? You know, I mean, you know, starting way back from the great days of Don Cronin, right, and yes. then Christian, right, and when Christian was here, you know, they, these guys. 
and we've we had this like this there these guys are committed right they're you know they they kind of build around our schedule they have, we, a, they have a calm we don't help quiet them. intensity yeah but we, but we don't help we're useless no, right they're like what hey, we, what hey is money in the line today and you know they'll 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 text us and then we'll be like oh oh by the way oh sorry we forgot to tell you it's yeah, canceled not, today yeah, we're not all right yeah, we're so not tom do. tom is like following right in those footsteps he knows, and yeah. and i think he's kind of taking it to a new level yeah. because yeah because he's he doesn't complain, right? Nope. You don't complain, right? Not he to us. He well, I mean, I, he might come, I mean, who knows what he says when he gets back to the radio He participates. Station. He yeah, participates. I mean, he's a little more participatory than than yes. Christian was. Yes. Christian was. I mean, Christian was silent, right? Yeah. Christian yeah. was. He was. Yeah, he's like, I am not here. I'm invisible, right? Yeah, he's like, that's like right. a true can. He's Pretend like, I'm not here. He was like a. He's like a wildlife photographer. Like yeah. he just, I cannot get engaged with this. I, I yeah. have to just let the cheetah eat the llama. Yeah, right? I have yeah. to. You yeah. know, right. Tom, I think Tom would help the llama. Yeah, Tom, <laughs> I think Tom's a helper. Yeah. Tom's a helper. He would do that. I agree. Tom I agree. Engage. I agree. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, uh, so good to see you, Tom. Um, and so, what's new with you? Just got back. Took a little trip yeah, last let's, week. Let's, uh, uh, let's hear Tom about was, uh, that. Tom was inquiring. Uh, yeah, I just got back. We uh, went down to good old Key West last week. Hadn't been back uh, since pre-COVID. That was kind of our last trip together really? right before COVID. So we hadn't been down. We had not been down. So what's changed down in uh, at the tip of Florida? You know, not much. Uh, <laughs> not much changes down there. You know, there's you know there's obviously some development. There's some you know you, you see buildings that might have had a little uh, age on them. Those have been spruced up. Have they? Uh, a couple of projects that they had started pre-COVID have been finished up. Some developments and things like that. But uh, yeah, happy to report that. Uh, Everything is alive and well down there. Let me ask you. So, is it has Key West, and I imagine that you know, with, as with all of these kind of you know fancy places, has Key West kind of been part of this? You know, where almost like the real estate, you know, the real estate boom that has happened in a lot of these places is Key West in the same in the same business. Where, oh yeah. Oh Where yeah. like where things you know maybe five, six, seven years ago may have been reachable for, sure. for some people, and now it's like. Yeah, now you can't touch it. You can't touch money. it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The real estate is just outlandish. Um, you know, and it depends on where you want to go. I mean, there are certainly very residential parts of, of Key West. You know, they kind of all the neighborhoods break out, and there's you know there's there's the downtown area, which is kind of where the cruise ships come in, and that's like that's ground zero. That's yeah. where that's where all the action is. That's where the bars are just rocking and rolling, and the restaurants have a ton of stuff going on. And then as you move you know further away from that, you know, like a like a like a like a circle, you know, you go out from that. Then obviously you get into some other other uh, areas that are uh, you know a little more residential, a little bit further away. If you want to go someplace, it's either a you know scooter ride, it's a bike ride, it's an Uber ride. You know, it becomes a little bit less walkable to get to all that stuff. And then you just you know like every, like everything, it's you know your downtown area, and then you just kind of move away. But there's just always something going on down there. There's always a festival. There's always a special event. There's always a. I mean, I talked to somebody last week who was there. Um, they have a new waterfront uh, amphitheater down there. And uh, Buffett was down there playing at the amphitheater, so it was kind of like, oh my God, if you're a huge Buffett fan, you get to see Buffett in Key West, see where it all happens, a bunch of, right. you know, there's right. a million right. stories, you know, all that stuff. But no, it's it's you know, there's there's a lot going on, and uh, there's a there's a ton of action happening down there. Well, I, but I, I guess my point is that I just feel like now, like kind of in, in and again, this isn't like the topic of today, but I, I imagine that Key West, like a, a lot of these coastal places, you know, if you, you know, somebody wants to move there, somebody oh, yeah, wants sure. to wants to move there and 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 live there and and, and not have it just be a vacation place, right. it's becoming so hard for like your, you know, somebody who. Who works in a, a? I manage a restaurant, right? How, how do you know? How do I live on that? Yeah, it's, that's a great point. It's it's the same same conversation that happens, for example, up here on the Cape. Yep. Right. The concern is always workforce housing, workforce housing. How can you afford to live and work in Key West, or has it just become this playground for people who come down? But to your point, you know, you want to be a, a server in Key West. You want to be in the hospitality industry. You want to manage a restaurant. You want to bartend at a restaurant. You want any of those things that you might want to do down there in any industry. Yes. Now you got to figure out well, where am I going to live? When and in many cases, what happens is you get pushed further up the keys, right? So yeah. a lot of people who who live and work in Key West used to live on Stock Island, which yep. is like the last island, if you will, before you get on to Key West proper. That area now has become very attractive, has become more developed, and then people who couldn't afford to live on Key West, who couldn't afford to buy on Key West. Have moved up to Stock Island, and then you would move up. You know, you end up moving just further up the Keys, and now you got to, you know, now you spend more of your time driving, not living. Right. And uh, that's, you know, that's not what that's everybody hard. wants. That, that's hard. That's not, yeah. not in Key West. Not. No, 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 no. no. So uh, yeah. So like I said, we hit a couple of hot spots. We went to a new restaurant that we hadn't been to really? before. 
There's something new that you haven't seen in Key West. Yeah, huh. yeah. We went to a restaurant on uh, a, a, a restaurant called Latitudes, oh. which was on Sunset Key. Oh, coincidental. Um, yeah, go figure. I <laughs> uh, get to take a ferry to get over there, like, really? a, like a launch. Huh. And uh, funny when you when you make your reservation at the restaurant, right? We, we discovered this. So your 6:45 restaurant reservation also is your 6:45 launch reservation oh so when you show up at the launch point and the launch shows up and the lady gets off with the ipad and says hey um what's your reservation time and yeah. you go 6 45 and she says well it's 6 15 step aside yeah <laughs> let's see all the 6 15 people and then if they get on we'll see if there's room for you 6 45ers it's good to know and then when you get on your if you get over there early then you can sit around the bar you have a drink you take all the scenery in but it it was <laughs> take just shirt off think, yeah but no there's not there's <laughs> yeah. not that going on i'll okay. tell you this okay. is uh, right. one of the few places we went that uh, was very specific about their dress code thank goodness. Thank and uh finally, so yeah finally yep. we're coming around right? that's yeah. right that's right 28 years later yeah. yep great great phenomenal food great restaurant great scenery great view great everything and uh yeah. So you're, and you're fully recharged. I saw you at the gym yesterday. You, you were like, ready, you're raring to oh, go. Oh, ready like, to go. Yeah, 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 ready to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. Was it's it, just what you needed. Yeah, it's this is just what the doctor ordered. You know what? It's actually, it's kind of funny. It was what, just what the doctor yeah. ordered. Like I said, you know, we, we, we've talked before. You go away, you know, for work and things like that. And that's not the same, right? And you, you, know, you no. go to a conference, you sit in a conference room all the time. There might be a little bit of socialization. There might be a little bit of downtime. But you're still working. You're still putting the time vacation, in. Vacation, right? Vacation's, vacation's different. Vacation. Vacation's different. So, uh yeah, it was a good chance to get away and, uh, you know, kind of sit in the beach and just enjoy the, the scenery and the people watching. And, uh, yeah, that's it. That was nothing more than that. And, and, and of course, people were probably watching you as well, right? Oh, yeah, for all the obvious there. reasons. Yeah, for all the obvious <laughs> Who is reasons. That, yeah. Who's yeah. that fancy couple over there? Yeah, yeah why is he sleeping <laughs> in the middle of the afternoon? <laughs> Wake he, him up. He is looks, he okay? He looks pretty tired. Is he, he okay? pretty tired. <laughs> He seems, he, he seems to be unbothered by all the noise around him. He seems to be very, very, that's a very fitful slumber he appears to be in. Hmm, hmm, hmm. He, he, He's really resting. Yeah, now he seemed a little bit more energetic about two and a half hours ago. Now he seems to be very, now he seems to be in rest mode. Yep, that's right. And that's it's one right. o'clock in the afternoon. It's strange. Yeah, well, you know, you just, it's all coming out. It's right. all, it's you know, it's all, you know. Yeah, it's like, right. It's a, it's six a cleansing. Of, that's it's exactly a, right. That's exactly right. That's, that's, that's what the tomato juice is yeah, for. That's, that's right. right. That's right. <laughs> So uh, what do you want to talk about today? So um, I have a couple of things I wanted to follow up on our estate planning conversation. Okay. Uh, when we talked about estate taxes, excuse me, estate taxes, I want to put a couple of numbers behind it. And then I was going to talk about uh, the two trust scenario. A two trust? Two trust. What? what? Two trust. I know. Nothing better Save than fast. one trust Save is two, two trusts. Trust. Yeah, that's right. Even right. better. That's right. So the two trusts, I'm just writing this down yeah. for Ray. Yeah, well, Ray wants detail. Scenario. Yep. Oh, there'll be some big details on yep. this. Yep, yep, All right. Yep. So, uh, all right. So we're going to talk about it. We're going we're gonna to circle back but for those of you who were here two weeks ago, right? Two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, two weeks, baby. Um, yeah. we, uh, we talked about the estate tax and kind of like, you know, just kind of the nuts and bolts of, of what a state or what the estate tax is and kind of, you know, who it applies to and what you have to be aware of as a, you know, as kind of just your rent, your regular Joe, you know, typical, you know, Red Sox. What could be out there? Fan. Sure. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, and then we'll also talk about the two trusts, you know, the, not the one, but the two trust, two trust system, scenario. as you can see, you know, so, so I have a trust here and then I'm like, what, there's something missing. Oh, it's a second trust. That's exactly right. Jason exactly explain right. us what what that is. And then, uh, you know, I don't know what else we'll talk about, but... You must have something on your mind, I as got always. something, but, you know, let's, 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 right, let's, let's go two trusts. Let's play right. it out. We'll play it out on the law we'll, side first. We'll be... Uh, don't go away. Don't go away. Hang on to your seats. The state tax two trust. We'll be right back. We'll there. be right back. And we're back, My FM 101.3. Jay Marsden with the Marsden Law Group. John Drohan, Main Effort Financial. Tom here with us. Ray's in the other room. He ran out of here like the building was on fire because he's had just about enough of our shenanigans Ray, well, today. Well, the other thing is, remember, I mean, and it's funny, you know, I come in and I give Ray a hard time thinking, oh, yeah, he's so happy to see me, right? He's like, hey, yeah, yeah, he, wants, he wants to listen to my crap, right? But Ray's been here since like five o'clock in oh, the morning. Yeah. He's working, right? Yeah. He's like, he's, like, yeah. he's putting yeah. like the, you know, the beginning, yeah. like he's a whole work, work he's, day. He's working is right. Like he's, yeah. he's putting in the time. But right? I mean, working like, I mean, so I listen, I do listen to Ray. I, sure, I listen to him all the you? time. I'll, I'll put on one on one. Point three out all the time, and I'll, and I'll listen to him especially when he's on. Yeah. And I mean, and he's a he, it's a real thing. Like it's he's like you almost think you almost think it was his job. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, but you'd almost think like he's he's wow, this is like a professional radio station. Like, he's a he's a real dish. He's a real radio personality. Like I mean, he's got to come up with he's got like he's got material. He's got he's got to prepare for it, yeah. right. He's, he's you know, got his rap. Uh, he doesn't do it once a week like that's we do, right? That's you know, right. That's he doesn't right. just come yeah. and like oh, what's on? What am I thinking about today? I'm as hey, I'm driving. I get to come in and talk about myself for forty five minutes. 
favorite topic, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Fantastic. For 45 minutes, and even that, we're like, so what else you want to talk about, right? <laughs> yeah. No, no, Ray's got to carry this. He's got a four-hour stint that he's got to go and, you yes. know, play music and, and, and be organized, right? you got to be organized. So, yeah. you know, I... He's got to have his act together, I, unlike you know, us I too. apologize. Right? I, you know what? I need to I need to just... I need to back off a little bit, right? <laughs> and I'm... And then, right, and then I'm, I'm miffed. I'm like, why, why is Ray, like... How why is he leaving? Why he's not giving me the attention that I think I deserve? he's not laughing at my jokes? I'm so funny. Yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> That's what I tell myself all the time. Yeah. I, well, I, I ask that all the time. Like, why, why are you not laughing? What, what is wrong? Did you, what is wrong? Did you hear me? Is this something on? Right? Is this something on? No kidding. <laughs> right? do, you, do I need to repeat that? Did you, do I need to put a, like, dun 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 Do you need to know like, that to actually leave this in? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So we were, uh, so we were talking two weeks ago. We were talking about the estate tax. And one of the, one of the solutions, if you will, that we talked about, or maybe we didn't get to this, re refresh my memory, um, we talked about using an irrevocable life insurance trust as a way to address your estate taxes. Irrevocable life Did we insurance. dive into that? Into the irrevocable yes. life insurance trust, the islet. Yes. Are yes. you referring to? I speak to? of the islet. No, we did not. We did not. We, right. did, we 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 alluded to it, and we kind of threw I think some. We thought it, we, yeah, stuff, we thought it needed its own special uh, attention. But we did not talk about the. We right. didn't specifically talk about the islet, right. which is this, one of my. Oh, I love this these feeds things. right into the two trust, maybe even three trust scenario we're talking about. Man, okay. Stop. So for the for the uninitiated, let me kind of explain how this works. So I just we realize Tom's not sitting down. And no, there's a reason. Not, yeah, that's, right. that's exactly right. Because he's got to. He's like he's got to stay get, awake. He's for looking this. for a pen. I got to get notes. <laughs> so when we talked pen. about estate taxes, one of the things that we talked about was if you get the estate tax bill, one of the concerns that people always have is where's the money going to come from? To how do I pay, pay the estate tax my bill, tax? Right, right. And and it sounds taxation without. Representation. representation. Sure, that's how we got here, right? But it's and it sounds a little obvious. And when I say it sounds a little obvious, what I mean is. You know, if something happens to, to, to you, for example, and you leave an estate of over a million dollars in the state of Massachusetts, you're going to have to file an estate tax return with the state. And the state is going to say at the end of your filing, oh, by the way, you owe us this much money, right? Now, depending on the size of your estate, you know, it could be if you're in the, let's say, $1.5, $1.6 million uh, range, uh, that's about $100,000 plus or minus uh, of an estate tax liability. And uh, you know, the, way the, the way the estate tax gets calculated is it goes all the way back to dollar one, and they, then they have an amount of money that you're, ta you're taxed on, and then they have a, a, some, some math you have to do that, come, that, that allows you to come up with your final obligation, if you will. Now, the question, the reason we're talking about this is where does that money come from, right? Now, if it's 100,000, just use those numbers we just talked about, but if it's a million five, million six estate, and it's a hundred thousand dollar bill that's going to get paid. If you have inherited IRA money, or you've inherited just cash in the bank, you inherited CDs, you inherited an investment account, you're going to find the liquidity in there to pay that tax liability. If you inherit a 1.5, 1.6 million dollar piece of real estate, place on the Cape, for example, you still have a one hundred thousand dollar obligation to pay to the state of Massachusetts. And if it's all real estate and there's no cash, then the question is, well, where does the money come from? It's a big bill. Oh, it's a big bill. I mean, it's a big bill no matter what. Even oh, it's if, 100 grand. Even if, some. even if you have a million dollars sitting in your savings account, you're like, wow, you know, you get a bill that says 100000 you know, you owe me $100,000. Yes. The first thing you're doing is you're calling your lawyer and you're right. like, what is this crap, right? You're like, and, and, you're and, freaking out. And you bring up a great point because rarely in your life do you get handed a hundred thousand dollar bill. Yeah, and it's right? not, and, and no one's no one's sugarcoating this for you. No, no, no one's teasing you with it. No one's saying, hey, oh by the way. I mean, unless you know you have your attorney is kind of unless you have unless you have like you know your people, your own yeah, people. Yeah. But it's not like the state's going to say, uh, oh by the way, get ready. There's an oh, it's not a, a big su bill it's not a suggestion. They're not going to say, hey, and if you get a chance, yeah, if you could just cover this when you're when you have a minute, it's not a big deal. That'd be super, right? But, that, but that's not what's going to happen. But if you're not, if, if you're not kind of privy to this, because because you may have done no estate or your or or the, the the person you're you know who you're inheriting this yeah. property from, they may have done no estate. There may, there may be no warning on this, correct? Right? No correct. warning, and you're like, all you know is you are you you know finally we are inheriting you know our province town like you know. 
three family, you know, yep. that, we, that we're like, oh, this is, we've been talking about this. Or we've this, been making or memories the, down here for a thousand years. Or, or, or even better, like the, the property in Boston, right? Have you, yep. you know, we've seen this, like, oh yeah, we've, we've owned this, you know, this, you know, our family, it's been in our family for all yeah. these years. And here we have this, you know, this, you know, the $2 million piece of property in like, you know, in Southie. And this is the greatest thing ever. And, and, they're, all, and they're all excited to tell you about, you know, my mom, my grandmother paid 22 grand for oh, this yeah. place back yeah. in 76. Remember, the, remember that Charlestown place we got? Yeah. Was, yep, yeah. that's right. And we, we inherited just, that. Yeah. It's all us. And, Me by, and, and my they, sister. And everybody, here's what everybody knows. Everybody knows the step up in basis. Yeah. And they know that they don't have to, that, they all talk about the $20,000 to buy it. And now they own it at $2 million. That's right. And they don't owe don't anything. Don't know There's no capital gains. I don't we, know a we, dime. We took it to the man. Yeah. I'm sorry. Hold on a second. Oh, there's another man? Yeah. I thought there was just one man. Oh, oh no. There's two people. No, no, I didn't realize like that. A, yeah, it's okay. his brother. It's yeah. like a heat miser. Yep. So then they want their money. The state wants their money. So if you if you don't have the liquidity, the state doesn't care, right? Yeah. They just don't care. They're just going to say, look, that's that's a you problem. That's not a us problem. All we know is there. here's your bill, and I don't really care how it gets paid as long as it gets paid. Now, if you're sitting on a piece of real estate and there's no cash in your estate, then you've got to come up with cash. Yeah. And that coming up with cash means either taking out a loan against, for example, a piece of property. And if you own the property with multiple people, this can become Good luck. cumbersome. This can become yeah. very cumbersome. And if you owe a sizable tax liability, this potentially becomes even more cumbersome. Because now that property that you thought you were going to get, that you were going to get outright with no obligation on it, if it's now got a sizable obligation that needs to be paid and you have to go work this out, this is work, mm -hmm. right? This is not just I inherited the property. This is it's work, and you got to take out a loan. What just like any time when you take out a loan, then it's like, hey, let's the bank's going to say, all right, well, let, you know, well, who tell, are we on, tell, who are we underwriting? Tell yeah. me all about yourself. Yeah, who, tell me who all about everybody. Who am I giving everybody. my money to? Yep. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, oh, your oh your credit score stinks. Yeah. Oh oh really? So we're going to get we'll give you a loan. Here's your interest rate, and you're yep. like, yeah. So so this thing that you thought was like scot free and easy and no moving parts now becomes complicated. So what happens is for people who have have done some planning who have some have some a little bit of foresight around this and they recognize at their demise that there's going to be a tax bill that needs to come due what they will do in many cases is they will purchase life insurance and we make fun of life insurance and we make fun of the insurance industry all the time but in until, this case until now this case until we now. love them because you know who makes them. fun of you know who's making fun of us right now the, the life insurance, insurance that's exactly right yeah, life insurance. Insurance. i oh, knew you'd come oh, around yeah, yeah. Hold yep. on. Hold Only a matter of time. Don't answer that right away. Don't let that ring. <laughs> let that ring. It's yeah. probably Drohan or Mazden. Yeah. Heard this show. Steve let Christopher, it ring. how many help you? Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's exactly right. Yep. Yeah. Hold on. This Hold on. It. This is where Steve Christopher okay, is when he comes around. Yeah. Now. All right. right. We're talking about our dear friend we Steve. We love you to death, Steve. But, yep. But he's but he's he's a life insurance guy, right? Yes. And then has yes. made his entire career. And he's like, oh yeah. Oh, oh, guess what? Guess what you need right now? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to oh you want to take out a loan? You want to take out a loan to pay your two hundred thousand dollar you know, estate tax bill? Or you wish you had your Irrevocable life insurance. Trust. And so what John is referring to is when you, if this is the strategy that you are going to employ, what you will do, and the reason that you do it this way is because life insurance works like any other asset. If you own it in your name at your passing, the amount of that life insurance gets added to how much you have in your name at your death, which makes you owe the government more Even money more. in estate taxes. So if you have a million dollar policy, on top of that $1.5 million property, you now have a $2.5 million state and your taxes are gonna be accordingly adjusted upwards. You're paying more. That's right. So yeah. what people will do who are doing this is either buy a life insurance policy to pay the estate taxes or to pay close to what the obligation is when they pass away with those life insurance proceeds because life insurance comes to you income tax free. But because we just talked about how it would just add to your woes if you owned it, people will buy life insurance in the name of a life insurance trust, mm. also called an irrevocable mm. life insurance is this trust. Tax fraud? I feel or like as tax John fraud. mentioned it, I lit. Yeah. No. That's it's not. the acronym. That's it's the not. Ac yeah. Now, if you own Paul, if you own a life insurance policy and you want to put it into your irrevocable life insurance trust, it has to you have to live and it has to live there for three years before it's considered removed from your estate. So you do you can do that, you can transfer it into your irrevocable life insurance trust, 
or you can buy the policy right from Jump Street when you fill out the paperwork with Steve. From Jump Street Life. <laughs> in the name of the Life Insurance Trust and you never owned it, the Life Insurance uh, Trust owns your life insurance. So, so, so talk, go in a little more detail about this because the importance is the ownership of it, right? Correct. So if, if, if a trust, so if, and for, for those, and we talk about trusts all the time, and one of the things that, you know, kind of growing up in the business, the, the best way I understood it, it was explained to me by my, by my, you know, my, my mentor, my, my, uh, you know, my, my Jedi master, uh, Mike Yoda. Yoda. Yep. Insurance he, Yoda. Yep. And he was like, a trust is nothing more than a box. Yep. A trust is a box that you put stuff into, right? Yep. So stuff meaning property, money, a, a, life a, insurance, a, 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 a life insurance policy, right? Correct. So in the case of like we talked about revocable versus irrevocable trusts, a revocable trust usually, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not a lawyer, I just nope. play, I, I play work on the radio. one on TV. A, a revocable trust, most of the time, you are the trustee, meaning that you are the one who gets to control the trust. Yes, yeah, you're in, in charge. In most yep. cases, right? Yep. So that is that makes it revocable, meaning you can be like, hey, I'm the trustee, and, and, and all the trustee, the trustee in this whole trust talk, the trustee is the person in charge of what goes on in that box. Correct. Right? So the trust says, here's some instructions, and the person who's responsible for all this is the trustee, right? Yep, that's so right. So revocable means... I'm the trustee. Yep. I, that means I'm in I charge. Can, yep, I can change I'm in charge. It. I can change it. I can. I put stuff in. I can put stuff in. I can take stuff out. I can do. I, I have total control of this. Now, in the case of an irrevocable trust, I, me, me being the donor, me, the one who's putting the stuff in the trust, I'm not in charge of it. Correct. A different trustee. So then I say, oh, here's a. There's a. There's a, a trustee that it's not me, right? That's right. And whoever that trustee is, they are in charge of. They that. are in charge of everything in the box. Yep. And so in the case of, in this case, the ownership of a life insurance policy and people, if you, if you don't really understand kind of how life insurance policies work, there's an owner and then there's a person who is insured. There's the insured person and they don't necessarily have to be the same person. Correct. Right? And there's a beneficiary. So you get three parties. Exactly. And yep. then there's the beneficiary of, the, of that. So, so explain to us in the case of the, uh, of the irrevocable life insurance trust, like kind of what is, how is that set up? Yeah. So, so to your point, so when you own a life insurance policy, when you get the paperwork, they're going to say, who's the owner of the policy? And in many cases, it's yourself. You say, well, I'm the owner. Okay. And who's the insured? And I'm the insured. And who's the beneficiary? My wife, yep. for example. That's, very, that's, your, very, standard, that's your standard yeah, policy, that's your, right? That's I love you, you love common. me, and that's what we're going to do, right? This is a different scheme. This is a little bit different. This is basically saying, look, I don't want to own the life insurance because if I own it, it's going to be included in my estate at my mm, death. It's jacking up my it's jacking up my cost. That's right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this life insurance trust own this life insurance policy. Right. Oh, okay. We can do that. So John's life insurance trust owns the life insurance. So policy. essentially, the box we're talking about owns the policy. That's right. That's the, the, the that's this right. trust this entity owns the policy. Yep. That's right. Okay. And who's the insured? Oh, the insured's still me. Yep. Right. So you know, when I go, the policy pays out. Still me. And then who's the beneficiary? The beneficiary is the trustees of my life insurance trust. Right? Exactly. So it's 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 the, the the beneficiaries are named in the trust, right? Correct. So that's the way trusts are set up, right? So yep. so there's the trust has beneficiaries, right? Correct. So so essentially, like the trust is the beneficiary, right? That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah exactly right. So what so what happens is when I go, the tr the, the life insurance is not in my estate because I don't own it. When I go, the insurance company gets a phone call that says, hey. You guys had an insurance policy on Jay. He's dead. Who's calling the Who's calling the insurance trustees? Company? The trustee, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're gonna say, well, you know. And again, you're doing this with people who who obviously, uh, you know, you're you're not strangers, right? Yeah. This is this is usually family. It's usually some, in you know, inside the family unit, if you will, all the players, right? So when I go and everybody understands my estate plan, which is to say, I did some planning, I bought some life insurance, and when I'm not around, call the company because they're gonna give you a check. Mm. And the check is gonna be made payable to the trustees of the life insurance trust. And they're gonna put it inside the account that holds the money that is used to pay the premiums on the life insurance policy. So let me go over that again. So the, 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 the life insurance trust is gonna set up a bank account, mm. the trustees, I should say, of the life insurance trust. I guess they're gonna walk over to the Middlesex Savings Bank and they're gonna say, hey, I got this trust, it's a life insurance trust. I need to open a bank account. Here's a tax ID number. And the bank's going to say, great, here's some paperwork, name of the account, Jay's Life Insurance Trust. Okay, great. Here you go. Here's a checkbook. And well, you'll, you know, you'll put 10 bucks in there to seed the thing and it's up, up and running and, and here we go. So when I get this life insurance policy, 
it's a policy for my life, right? Not, not a term policy, it's a policy for my life. And when I get the policy, the great Steve Cristofori is going to say, oh, by the way, here's your premium invoice, yeah. right? This is how much you have to pay every year until you die. This is how life insurance works, right? And if you do that, we will pay out this amount of money, right? Yep. It's a contract with the life insurance company. And so I have to come up with that money. At once, it's usually a once a year thing. I get to write a premium every year. Every year, make a premium payment. That premium payment comes out of the bank account that we have set up. Now, how does the money get into the Excellent bank account question. to pay the premium? Yeah. Well, I, we talk about this on the show all the time, 2023, the annual gift exclusion is $17,000. I can write a $17,000 check to anybody I want as a gift. So I am going to write a gift to my to life insurance trust, trust yeah. through my trustees of $17,000. All right, so so what does that do? So the fact that I can write that that I, I have the gift exclusion. Yep. So I, I I can so you know we talked about gifts before. Like so I can give you know, in 2023 I can give seventeen thousand dollars to whoever I want. Yep. Right. Whoever right. I can give it to, uh, to whoever I want, and I don't have to tell anybody. I, there's, I don't have to report anything. I gave it to Tom before you walked in the door. I, right. I, right. I'm like, hey, before John gets here, I'm like, gonna just, right? I can do I, this. And, I can do and this. When you leave, Tom's gonna give me seventeen. It's it's crazy. It's right? Yeah. It, so I can give that, I can give, so, so all I'm doing is I'm, uh, me as the, as the donor of the, uh, as the creator of this irrevocable trust, I'm just giving it 17,000. We'll say, let's say the, the premium, that's not a bad life insurance policy, right? Well, $17,000 so, well, a so, year. So, so here's the reason I did that because depending on your age, yeah, when I, you I decided to pull the trigger. Well, on and, I, and I, it's right. And I ran, and the younger you do it, the you know, premium changes, right? So. So I did. I ran these numbers based on our last conversation. So if you're in the 60, early 60s ish, just going to make up that general vague uh, window, uh, a one million dollar life insurance policy, a, a, a second, what they call second to die life insurance policy, which means the insurance company will do the underwriting on both of you because that's when you want the payout, right? Uh, it will cost you just about. Seventeen thousand dollars. What, 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 what kind of life insurance? What, I'm, I want to sell that life. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. So it's so you, we basically what you're doing. Remember, think about the big. Well, let's go to a quick break and then we'll we'll dive back into this because this is a little. This is it's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. It's but, a lot. But it's a lot. But it's fun, right? And, and it again, is fun. You know, it is fun. I, 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 and I wish I may I may have to send a copy of this to Mike Dean's ass because this will. I mean, this is going to make this his is, day. This is going to love this. Bring in the tears all day long. Bring in the tears. Right, we'll be right back. Don't go any, Don't go. Stay away. right there. <laughs> And we're back. Money in the Law, my FM 101.3. Jay Mars and the Mars in the Law Group. John Drohan, main effort financial. We're diving into the deep end of the pool today, talking about life insurance right. trusts. Right. Um, so, right before the break, what we were doing was we were laying out the, the we were laying out the, the the glide path of what this plan looks like. And remember, just to to refresh your memory, this is about creating liquidity in your estate at your passing to pay estate taxes. Right. So, if you have a a taxable estate, and you and you're and you don't want to have to, you know, and you don't want to worry about your loved ones having to come up with the the, the cash to pay the bill. This is one way that people let me translate cover the that for tax. you. Let me translate that for you. So, what what Jay is saying in 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 his le speak. legality loyal lawyer speak is that if you inherit something that's worth over a million dollars, yes, you're going to get a bill, yes, and you're going to have to pay that bill. Yes, this. Is potentially a way if the the person who is who is the that you are inheriting this from, if they they may have done this little they've done a little work beforehand that is enabling you to pay the bill. This allows somebody else to pick up the tab. Exactly, it, it's exact, <laughs> it's exactly right? what it's, it is. It's like it, it, it's like if it's your old man from the grave, he's picking like, up the tab from like, the grave. It's like your old man calling yep. in and saying, "Guys, I got drinks this. on me. That's right. Drinks on me." That's, That's exactly right. what's That's happening. Right. right. So, so re the, the bartender the, comes over and says, uh, "This is this has been taken, care, been taken of. care of. Yeah, your money's no good here. Yeah. That's right." <laughs> so the structure to this is: you're buying a life insurance policy, and you're putting the life insurance policy inside of what is called an irrevocable life insurance trust. That's step one. Either you buy it right from Jump Street inside the policy, or you move policies you already own into the life insurance trust by changing the owner of the life insurance policy. Because an insurance policy has three players, owner, the insured, and the beneficiaries. You're just changing the ownership of the policy. Do that three years later, out of your estate. Doesn't include everything. It's not included in your estate when we start adding stuff up and you die. 
So you've moved these policies or bought these policies inside your life insurance trust. You named your kids as the trustees of the life insurance trust. Now you got these policies in there and then the premium bill comes due and you got to pay the premium bill. How do you do it, right? And, the, and in theory, the kids are looking at you going, well, they're your policies. I yeah. mean, I don't want to pay it. If I have to pay it, I might pay it. I'm not sure I will, but ideally you pay. That's it. a good point, right? That's a good point. So, so let's say you're just that guy. You're the, you, you've, you bought your, you know, your, your, your South Boston triple decker back in, you know, you know, in the 1950s. And you're now you're living on social security. You got two people that live up in your building. Sure. They're paying rent. It covers your costs. It enables you to live. You don't have a lot of money, right? You, you don't have not. a lot of cash, you right? Might not. But there's, but your house is worth $2.5 million, right? Yeah. So you're like, well, and, and, you know, and then you go see your estate planning attorney and they say, hey, listen, not for nothing, you're probably going to have an estate tax bill that you're going to owe, right. that your estate is going to owe when you pass for, for the state of Massachusetts. And you can say, here's an option. Here's something that you can do. And you say, well, you know, you can, you can set up this irrevocable life insurance trust based on your life. And right now you're 65 years old. So if I do the math, it's going to cost, call it $10,000 a year. $10,000 a year is what it's going to cost for you to have a, a, a whatever we, you know, call it, call it what you call it a million for, to, to have a, to have a, to have a $750,000 life insurance policy. Well, that's, that's probably not what your estate tax bill is going to be. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, but I'm I, just saying, if yeah. you have a, you know, let's, let's call it, let's, let's, let's call it like a, like even if I'm a 65 year old guy and I need to get a, a $200,000 life insurance, it ain't going to be cheap. No, no, it's not. No, it's not this and this and that, and make no mistake about it. Like this is, there, there are some moving parts to this plan, right? I mean, there's, there's other options that are available to you. We're just highlighting this as so, an option. So my point, if, if this becomes an option, let's say you're, you're a 65, but you're a healthy guy, right? Yep. Because, you know, a lot of 65, they, the insurance company won't insure you. They're like, eh, right. you've had two heart attacks and you have diabetes. Yeah. We're, you, 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 we, we're not going to do it, right? Yeah. Yep. But let's say you're, you know, you're healthy, you know, you're, you know, you, you, you walk every day, you go to the gym, right? And, sure. you, and you say, so, you know, you, you, maybe you take a little bit of blood pressure medicine, but you're, you're, you're a healthy guy for 65. So yeah, we'll insure you. Here's how much it costs. Cause your 65 is going to cost $10,000 a year for a hundred, let's say we use $100,000 as like, that's what we think the estate tax is sure. going to, that's the number going to be 10,000 bucks a year. And you're like, I ain't got that. I don't, right. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have that. I won't feel comfortable doing that. But that's when you could go to your kids or, or whoever, whomever the beneficiary of this property is going to be and sure. say, here's an option. But guess what? I, I can pay 2000 of it. Can you guys pick up right. the rest of the tab? And and here's the reason why. Because if you do pick up the rest of the tab, then you're not going to have to pay this hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars state tax bill. This insurance policy is going to cover it. Right. So so that's absolutely part of the conversation that you may have, which is to say, if I can't, because remember, the the reason that's important is because if you don't pay the insurance premiums, the insurance goes away. Right. Exactly. And so that so it's important that there's an understanding of what this commitment looks like because you don't want to get six years into this program or six years into this project and then just decide, I don't want to do this anymore. Right. right? Or I can't afford to do this anymore. Yeah, I'm not going to bother doing it. Right. And wherever the money come from. And then you take your chances. Like, oh, whatever. You know, and then it's like, oh, whatever, you know, you'll well, then, then you it, say then it's, it's, then it's, it's your, your problem. problem. That's exactly. right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. It's not my problem. I'm not solving this problem anymore. I'm not making it easy for you guys. You don't want to play ball. Exactly. But it's fine. But the idea is that people will do this to create liquidity in their estate so that there's a payer source for the estate tax obligation that's going to come due. So remember, you've gotten, you've, you've taken life insurance out of your name. You purchased life insurance out of your name. So it's not part of your estate when you pass away. It goes into this trust. And then you are going to ideally put money in every year through this annual gift exclusion. And you're going to write a $17,000 check every year to the trustees. And then the trustees are going to turn around and take some number of that $17,000. And they are going to turn around and pay the insurance premium with that money every year. And then this becomes a wash, rinse, repeat process. Yep. Every year, you're gonna write a $17,000 check or whatever the new updated annual exclusion amount is. That's gonna go into the insurance uh, bank account, the life insurance trust bank account. The trustees are gonna say, thank you very much. And then they're gonna write a check and that's gonna cover the premium. Now, there's one other part of this moving part plan that we've just talked there's about. More moving parts. Which is, when you write that check to the Life Insurance Trust for gift tax planning purposes to have that gift count as a present interest gift, I'm not going to get into the details, 
you have to send out what is called a crummy letter. So, and, it, and, it, and it's spelled it's, exactly as it sounds. Yeah, it's a it's crummy, a crummy letter. letter. Just write that crummy letter, right? Write yeah, that it's crummy a, letter. Right, it's like actually, it actually, you're going to write it with a crummy pen. You're going to write it on a crummy piece of paper. You're right? going to feel yeah. crummy doing it. I, do it I, what did you do the crummy? I did it on the crummy table, yep. right? Yeah. It comes from an actual <laughs> uh, law case. It comes from an actual, uh, clearly. actual, actual, a, actual, actual, actual litigation, yeah, right? Mr. Crummy. crummy v. Yeah. You got it. It's exactly right. But basically what this letter says is, and you send this out to the beneficiaries of the Life Insurance Trust. And basically the way it works is, this letter basically says, hey, Jay, hey, John, I just put $17,000 into this Life Insurance Trust for a life insurance policy of which you are the future beneficiary, okay? You have 60 days, for example, to take that money out if you want to take the money out. Yep. Okay? You can use it if you want. Jaws, yeah, Jaws it's there. Yeah. You're the beneficiaries. Do whatever you want to do with it. Yeah. Right? If you don't take it out, the window closes. It's usually 30 days, 60 yeah. days. The window closes, and then day 31 or day 61, you can't get the money anymore. All done. Bye-bye. That's it. You have, And then next year, when I do this all over again, you're going to get another letter that says, hey, if you want to take out the money I put in, you can, but the 30 days, the window closes, blah, blah, blah. This goes on ad infinitum, right, until you check out, and then you don't have to do this anymore. The purpose of this letter is to make, kind of pull the glue of this entire transaction to basically create this gift that's allowed to be made to the trust right. to create it and to, and to treat it as a present interest. As a true, as a gift. gift. As right. a true as, gift. As, as, as a true I, gift. Yeah, because if it's a gift and, I, and, I, and it's just getting paid to something and I have no control over it, then technically it's not a gift, right? It's, it's not, I can't, I'm well, not using Well, the, the it reason it. it works is because if you, if you didn't do this, the, what, you're what you're trying to do is you're trying to take credit for a gift that you make right now that's really not going to pay out until that life exactly. insurance policy pays out in the future. That's what happens. So this has to be done. So again, you go through this, you know, hit every year, January 2nd, <laughs> let me print the new letter out. Everybody gets the letter. Everybody gets it. And this little transaction happens and, 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 and away we go. Everybody gets a letter, except for your brother. You probably don't want to give him the letter until like, you know, day 59 and a half, right? You're like, hey, oh, did you see this? You just, oh, never mind. Well, you bring up a great point. Yeah. I mean, if, if somebody was in such in a, in such a position where they say, you know what, I am gonna, you know yeah. what, I'm heading down right I now. I'm gonna go get my, I, I want my. <laughs> so that would tell you that, you know what, maybe I'm not gonna do this anymore, right? Yeah. I mean, and this is the this is the idea. The idea is that you say, look, you can have the money if you want it, but if you have the money, I'm just not gonna. I'm just gonna stop doing this. Yeah. And then and then I'm not gonna go through this 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 scheme anymore. Right. And you're not gonna get any money. And then you're gonna get less money because you're not gonna get this insurance policy because it's gonna lapse because I'm not doing it. Right. right? So this is kind of how this whole thing works, right? You buy these life insurance policies, and then, and then what's going to happen is, it's not if, it's when. When you pass away at some point down the road, the life insurance policies are going to pay out the amount of money that you've bought through this policy, right, that, that Steve oversold you, right? So you're going to get, you know, that much, that much, you're going to get the amount of insurance that sure you have you got good coverage. coming your way. Make sure we cover all contingencies. I mean, you were just, you're for the for the state estate tax, you were writing a $750,000 death benefit yeah. for a $2 million estate. I don't know. That's I, I, crazy I didn't, numbers. I didn't do the math, but whatever, I didn't do the math. I know, yeah. oh, Mr. Yeah, yeah, Forey yeah, did. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> well, let's so. just make sure we got all our bases covered. More money's here. better, right? Who likes, who likes more money? Right. Right. Well, if, when if you, a lot when of money is good, isn't a lot more money you want 100,000 or you're going to want 750,000? Hold on, hold me. on. You want a 30-foot boat or you want a 50-foot boat, right? <laughs> right? Do, you, do you like it like it? Do you like it love it, right? If you loved it at this, do you love it at that, right? All the, all the lines, right? Uh, so you care about your family? Do you, you really you, care about your... You, you, self, care? you selfless, no good. <laughs> you cared about your... What's $100,000 going to buy you in 20 years? Nothing. You're committing parental Nothing. malpractice by not even thinking about this. So so this is what happens. So you, you, you check out and then the insurance company pays out Right, and then your family does their their stuff that they have to do to let everybody know how much money they inherited, and they get a big step up in basis on that two point five million dollar property, blah blah blah, and they get, they don't have to come up with cash, right? Well, because that's, they're going to get cash. At the end of the day, that's the that's the thing is is you're doing this in order to free up cash to have liquidity. You're creating liquidity. That's yep. exactly right. So you right. have money, so you can. And and you may not only use this for estate tax. You may use this for whatever you want. I oh, mean, there yeah. could there yeah. could be there could be debts. There could be mortgages yep. on the property. There could be all kinds of things that you know just to kind of help settle this estate. Yep. So everybody can kind of so and and again particularly in real estate. So then the, the real estate is kind of free and clear of everything, yep. right? So you may have tenants that you may have to get you know that people may have to you know leave because if you're going to change the property, so there there's there's costs involved with that. That's right. And 
what the, and again, life insurance kind of is is you know one of the things about life insurance is it 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 it, it, it does this right? It, yeah. Even in in all senses, it's a it's very simple. Like somebody dies, the the death certificate comes. You send the death certificate to, and the claim form to the life insurance company. They review it and they say, well, it's been ten days. Okay, yep. send them a he's check. Really, he's looks, really dead. Yeah. And then they and they say, who's this made out to? It's pretty simple. It's made out to this trust. It's made out to this person. They cut the check. There you go. That's simple. right. That's right. And then the trustees get the check, and then they wait, wait, wait. You do the you do the uh, do the return. You owe the money. You write the check. You get your you get your estate tax lien release from the state. And you're that you're in yeah. the wind. Well, you're the, in the I wind. Mean, the, the trustees get the check, and the first thing they or, or anybody who gets a life insurance check, the first thing you do, you put it in the bank. Yeah. Because it's it's made out to whoever you know. If it's made out to the trust, put it in the trust bank account. If yep. it's made out to you, it goes into your bank account. And That's right. It's real money. Yes. And it's money that is your money, and there's no income tax involved in it. That's the beauty of it. That's yeah. the beauty of it. It's oh, that's right, income tax free. What what about the taxes on this? Um, it's called none. Yeah. It's called none. That's what it's called. It's just called it's free money. Free money is what like there's not, there's not a lot of opportunities for free money in life. This is one of them. So, right. and and just to understand though, like from a, from a life insurance standpoint, you know everybody thinks, oh wow, is that some kind of magical thing? Because when you have a life insurance salesperson telling you about how magical this, oh, yeah. it's tax free, it's the greatest thing ever, oh my god. I mean, remember all the remember those those seventeen thousand dollar a year premiums, which is a lot of money. Yes, <laughs> it know, is. That's all after tax money. No one's deducting that. No, this, no, this no. is all money that has already been taxed, yep. and, and and it is given to the life insurance, and it is paid by somebody, whether it be the donor, whether it be the beneficiaries, whomever. Someone's paying that whatever that premium. And by is. the way, and you may have you, these premiums may get paid. Over and I remember we're talking about somebody in the early '60s. You could be paying 20 years of life insurance premiums yeah. in the hope of this. So you're basically you're giving your money to the life insurance company, and they're going to go do something with yeah, it, right? They're going to go. And, that, and we we joke about this all the time. There's a reason that they have really big buildings. They know what they're doing, right? Yeah, they're, 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 they're not losing money. That's right. No. That's right. So they're going to go do something with your money. What about you guys? That's right. Are you, guys you, are you okay? okay? You okay with this? this? I mean, yeah. if I die, and they're like, yeah, because you know what we have, we have, we have, we have our. Our, all of our data that from dating back a million years. So if you're a 65 year old guy, you're probably going to live another eight years. Or that, that's what that's what our 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 table show. Yep. So you may live more, you may be less, but based on the numbers, that's probably what it's going to be. We have be. a pretty good idea when you're going to check. Yeah, you know yep. what? We're going to we're 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 okay with. We're this. going to make the bet. We're, we're willing to make that bet. We're, we're trusting our guys. Yeah, right? that's right. We got, that's right. We got some guys back there that yep. are figuring this. Yep. That, that are, are pretty working smart. They like numbers. They're yeah. pretty smart, right? <laughs> So, th so you're gonna you're gonna play this game, right? You're gonna write a check. They're gonna insure you. You're gonna write a check. They're gonna insure you. You're gonna, and at some point, something's gonna happen, right? Yep. And you're gonna check out, and maybe they lose, maybe they win. More often than not, it probably comes right in around where they predicted it, and then your family gets this money, and then they can use that money to pay off. So this is when we started the show today. We started talking. We started the show by talking about, talking about the two trust solution. The reason we're highlighting this is because, in your planning. You can have multiple trusts that do different things, right? And I, and I say this, and I don't want to, and I'm not trying to simplify it too much, but we say this to people all the time, and they're surprised. Yeah, they're surprised that, that wait, I, wait, no way. I can have a, I can have, a, I can have two trusts. No way. I, I have, how, how many can I actually have? I, said, I don't know. How many do you want to have? I, I mean, buy, I can buy. Uh, I, can, I can buy we, more than one trust from you, estate planning attorney. No way. Absolutely. <laughs> Bill, did you hear this? <laughs> Hold on one second. Get in get here. Get in here. Get in here, right? That's exactly right. Who needs right. one? That's right. Trust me. You, trust you, all you all get a trust. Ding, ding, you ding, get ding, a trust. Ding, ding, you ding. get a trust. So you can have multiple trusts that serve multiple purposes. Trust you, can have, you can have trust for your kids. You can have trust for individual trust for your kids. You can trust for your grandkids. You can have trust for life insurance. You can have trust for, for property. You can have trust for... You can have all kinds of trust. They all do different things. They all can do the same thing, but they can all do different things. So... Right. The multiple trust solution is not unusual. We'll do it for clients all the time. John talked about a revocable trust earlier. We'll do a revocable. You probably got one of those. Well, you, you have you, one of those. You, you're probably going to have one of those yeah. a lot, in a lot of cases. And then you have an irrevocable trust that holds property that you're protecting, that you're trying to get out of your name, that you want to make your legacy. You could have a life insurance trust that holds life insurance that wants to provide liquidity to your estate. You could have a special needs trust for a child or a loved one who's got some issues that you want to make sure that, that inheriting money doesn't create a problem. You could have a trust because you just don't like your in-law, you know, your son-in-law, your, your daughter-in-law. Right. You want to protect your kids because they're in a bad marriage or a bad relationship. You, there's all kinds of reasons that you might have trust. It's not always just 
one trust. And I say that because a lot of the planning that we see for people, they have this one trust that's trying to do a lot of work, trying to do a lot of things. Right. And sometimes it just doesn't work that way. They just can't work that way. And it way. does a lot of work. And then over time, your situation changes and it, and it becomes, yeah, it, it's, it's too cumbersome. It's, it's too many things to, that it's trying to accomplish. That's right. That's right. And so, and the reason I highlight this is because you know, if, if, if you're in this scenario, congratulations, right? You're in this scenario because you've been, you've, you've been able to become uh, of means, right? You've, you've, you've got you, stuff. You've got stuff. You've got, and you've probably got a lot of stuff. And so and when you have a lot of stuff, it gets a little more complicated. And so, you know, your situation is going to be dramatically different from another person's situation who might not have as many trusts because they might not, just might not have as much stuff. So, you know, or might, they might, they might not be as many, their issues are different than your issues. Sure. And so they require different trusts to do different things because they have different things going well, on. They need a trust too. Make no mistake about it. They, 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 well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> when, when I went out crazy. Huh? <laughs> Settle down. Settle down. No one's going to say, well, you don't need a trust at all. Whoa, 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 We've whoa, done that. Whoa. We've said that. There yeah. are there are situations where that makes exactly. perfectly are, appropriate kidding. sense. Yeah, but, yeah. But, but, but we also may suggest it for a whole host of reasons. Sure. Not because we just like suggesting trusts, because we do, but we like suggesting trusts because they solve a lot of these wow, it's, it's, types of issues for people and they make things very, very easy and very, very straightforward. Everybody knows the rules. Everybody knows what's supposed to happen. And, and, and it, it just makes it, it facilitate, facilitates your legacy much better, we think. We that's believe. It. We believe it does. So Legacy facilitation. So that's the multiple trust. I'm just The purpose of the conversation was to say you can have lots of them. It's not wrong. It doesn't mean you did something wrong. It's not bad. It's not good. It's the. It's probably the right solution given whatever you have going on. Tom's like, get me my trust. Why well, I need a trust right Tom's now. Tom's like, I, I need a trust I, for. I need like, a trust for this camera. He's not, he's yeah. not letting us out of this room. <laughs> not letting us out of this right. room. All uh, right, we're about out of time. All right, all right, all time right. to go. We all right, it. so we. Uh, what have we learned? We learned about all kinds of uh, important things today about legacy, right? Our our legacy facilitation. Uh, we learned about Jay's trip to Key West. Yep. Yeah. And, and by uh, the way, if you're paying attention, next week, guess your guardian. That's right. Guess your guardian workshop, Mars that's and Law, right. Tuesday the 28th, 5 p.m. Call Tuesday. the office, 508-858-5324. Still a couple seats left. To reserve a yeah. seat. Seating is limited. A couple seats left. Um, but we talk, we're calling it yeah, Guess Your Guardian because we don't want to guess yeah. who the guardian would be the kids. Yeah, so if you want to you want to be you take want part to in that, that workshop, uh, let us know. You don't, walk, want, you don't want to spin the wheel on that and see who's going to write. You'll, you'll walk away making some progress. You'll walk away making some progress. I will see everybody next week. Thanks for joining us. Money in the Law, MyFM 101.3, Howlison Cable Access, Howlison Hub. See everybody next time. Have a great week.